Hansel, Gretel, put your weapons away. Scarlet. Look, they're obviously harmless. It's hard to imagine they were trying to start something. Are you sure those eye aren't, eyes aren't just for show? Robot here is carrying a gun. I'm only following Familia rules to be armed at all times. I mean, the two of you always have dynamite and grenades on you, right? That, and it's a Sunday. We all have to adhere to the compromise, right? That thing is so dumb that we should just break it right now. Gretel. <laughs> Alright then, if you're not here for a date or an attack, then what is it? To buy sweets. So that's it. I wonder who we're doing this errand for. For her, dumb. Well, she is. Huh? I am? You are, aren't you? She stopped talking as Axel gave her a meaningful look. She must have has he, he must have his reasons. Playing along, she nodded in agreement. Oh, really? Well, thanks for shopping with us. They all cost the same, so pick whatever catches your fancy. Uh, okay. What should I pick? She crouched down in front of the sweets, clenching her knees as she tried to make a decision. Third from the right. Huh? While she hadn't been paying attention, Axel had crouched down beside her. He'd whispered into her ear quietly so that only she could hear him. <sighs> Third from the right. Third from the right? There from the right was six chocolate chip cookies in a clear bag tied up with a blue ribbon. Which one do, Which you, one want? do you want? Um, oh, uh, how about this one? Gretel wrapped the bag of cookies in paper before handing it to Hansel. Alrighty, thanks for shopping with us. I'll pay. Hansel held out his hand to... Hmm, are you sure it's not a... Expensively? At the... No, we're just shopping. Alrighty, if you say so. Deliciousness guaranteed or your money back. Let me know what you think about them next time you come by, if you feel like it. Oh, certainly. Fuku reached out to take the bag of sweets. Before she could pull away, Hansel grabbed her hand. I'm so curious. Can you actually speak for yourself without being prompted? Of course I can, Mr. Hansel. Then just be yourself with me, okay? Also, I'd appreciate it if you didn't call me Mr. Hansel. It just doesn't feel right. Then, how about just Hansel? Yeah, perfect. What are you doing, Hansel? Isn't this little girl the Oz? <laughs> I know, but they're just taking care of her. She's not actually a part of their familia. Nothing wrong with being a little friendly, right, Scarlet? Yes, within reason. Yay! What are you excited about? What are you going to do if they win her over? You're such an idiot, Hansel. Aren't you happy, Gretel? You made a friend. I have no intention of ever making friends. Gretel and Scarlet are happy to meet you too, Fuka. Baby. Uh, uh, thanks. Fuka squeezed his hand back. Unlike Hansel, Gretel's gaze was icy cold. We're done here. Let's go. Oh, okay. Wait. What? I'll escort you out of our territory. You will? Yeah, Gretel isn't particularly fond of you two. I'll make sure she doesn't try anything. <laughs> you don't need an escort. I'll keep my distance, don't worry. Scarlet walked over to one of the houses and began clambering up a drain pipe. In the blink of an eye, Scarlet was on the roof looking down at Axel and Fuka. Never listens. Let's go, guest. Okay. Bye bye, Fuka, baby. Goodbye, Hansel, Gretel. <clears throat> How dare the little girl give me a nickname? What did she not just call her Gretel? What? She called her Greta! I, did, I overread that. What the hell? Did you see that? No, I didn't realize. <laughs> Think is we see that name too often, you know? Mm, definitely. Ha, how do, dare that little girl give me a nickname? Isn't that nice, Gretel? It is not. It's not nice to be treated like you're less significant than a grain of sand. Just what it 
What is that little girl plotting? <laughs> what is she plotting? It feels a little strange to be walking side by side with Mr. Axel. Um, Mr. Axel, are you intentionally slowing yourself down? Yeah. Thank you. Don't get the wrong idea. I'm not doing it as a favor. Huh? I don't want the other side to see what you're doing. Other side? Uh, oh, you mean Scarlet? For me, it's Grim's Cabrim. Scarlet was walking along the rooftops, keeping a fixed distance from Fuku and Axel. It's pretty amazing that Scarlet can walk like that while keeping an eye on us. I'm keeping it from you. Don't go out of your way to make yourself visible. Is it bad if I'm seen? It doesn't feel very good to have someone watching your every move, does it? I'm sorry. I know what he said, but maybe he really is doing it to be nice to me. Mr. Axel might be a really kind person after all. Why are you smiling? I was just thinking that you're a really nice person, Mr. Axel. <sighs> Mr. Axel? Nothing. You interrupted my train of thought with your strange comment. Strange? Was there anything strange about what I said? <laughs> he stopped talking. Maybe I said something I shouldn't have. She cocked her head to the side, puzzled, but she couldn't figure out what she's done wrong. It feels like such a waste to go home in silence. She looked around, trying to find a new conversation topic. Oh, that's right. Did Mr. Karamiya ask you to get these cookies? Uh, was it Mr. Kitty? I'm not obligated to tell you. Oh, uh, right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not good at this. I just keep offending Mr. Axel. They're delicious. Huh? Those cookies are delicious. I'll let you have one. D does that mean these are... He looked away and Fuka bit her tongue. Does that mean Mr. Axel wanted to eat them himself? Suddenly those simple cookies seemed unusually special to her. Guest. Yes? Would you mind accompanying me on a slight detour? A detour? They made their way to a back alley bordered by Graham Street. On, uh, on one side and Oscar Wilde Street on the other. By the time they got there, the sky was already dyed a deep crimson. Scarlet had vanished without a trace. All they could hear was the sound of their footsteps. We are here. This is it. I'm sure this is where I first awoke. He told me to take him to the place where I first remember waking up. Axel just started at the ground, stared at the ground in silence. Mr. Axel? You really don't remember anything before then? His words following the, sil the long silence made her blink. When I returned from my patrols, you were lying on the couch. That's how we met. Your situation was explained to me, but I just couldn't accept it. Do you really not have any memories before then? Yes. I understand that you're not a member of another familia, but still, but I still... There was a sudden explosion. A shockwave erupted behind them, strong enough to make their hair fly back and pin their clothes to their bodies. What was that? Several figures were outlined in the white smoke. A familiar man stepped out from, um, from among them. Greetings again, my prey. Mr. Caesar. <laughs> so you remember my name. Caesar snorted and unfastened another sword. He switched from wielding a single longsword to dual blades pointing them both at Fuka. Today, you're mine. You'll have to go through me first. Axel raised his shotgun and moved between them to protect her. You're outnumbered. You should have run away. You should have run away when you had the chance. Kill him. At Caesar's command, the other man charged forward. Axel snapped his gun into a firing position and pulled the trigger. He missed the man he'd been aiming for, but the blast chopped into the support of a nearby awning. Within seconds, it had collapsed into the al alleyway, br alleyway, briefly stalling their attacker's advance. Sometimes my poor aim comes in handy. Go back to the mansion, guest. Huh? But Mr. Axel... I'll hold him off. But... Just go! <sighs> I hope you're ready for what's coming your way. I'm always ready. Oh, we got a picture. This is my job, after all.
Once I get back to the plaza, I just follow the red brick road. Fuku was running, just like she had on that fateful day, fleeing the exact same man from the exact same place. But unlike the fateful day, now she was familiar with the streets and people she passed. Even if she'd stayed, there was nothing she could have done in that situation. She would have only made things harder for Axel. I have to tell someone, I have to let someone know, and soon... I I'm sure Mr. Kerami and the others will be able to do something. Oh, Senorita, why are you in such a hurry? Mr. Kerami and Mr. Kitty, uh, help! What's wrong? Is Cece chasing you again? <laughs> How does he know? <laughs> Out of randomness. He's not chasing me, but but Mr. Axel. Mr. Caesar's after Mr. Axel. So that gunshot earlier was Axel? Y yes, he said he'd hold them off so I could get away. He's such a troublemaker. That he is. Well, let's return to the mansion like we planned. You, you're going back? But what about Mr. Axel? Leave him. He'll mad us on his own. Um, he was outnumbered. If we don't hurry, he'll... Really, no. You must be putting up... He must be putting up a good fight. If you got this far without injury, that's really all that matters. Putting up a good fight? A Capricimi is nothing more than a sacrificial pawn, after all. Mr. Karamiya. I'm sorry, Senorita, but I agree with Kiri. I'll send some scouts out, so please come back to the house with us. They just left him behind. What the <laughs> fuck? It would be nice if he would just stay in the forest like a good little feral wolf. They were in the office in the back of the mansion. They spread a map out on top of the big table in the center of the room. Fuka and Kiri were sitting across the table from Karen.